Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to developing soft skills and personality course from NPTEL MOOC at IIT Kanpur. I am Ravi Chandran giving you this course for the past three weeks. In the third week, uh, I just introduced a new topic that is habit and then I uh, introduced to you as how we can look at this habit in terms of developing our soft skills and personality. And in the last lecture, I actually discussed two stories, but I wanted you to remember two important aspects of developed uh, habits. The first one is about the, the doctor and the patient, in which the doctor actually happens to be the one who started the bad habit of smoking uh, in case of the patient and the patient could not give it up and then he became a cancer patient to whom the doctor uh, came for treatment. It was so ironic, but the point I was trying to make was both good habits and bad habits are formed by peer group. That is by our friends, even sometimes our well-wishers, even there are sometimes parents who play a very crucial role as, as I was telling in the next story and it is their influence and or the things which come from the environment that makes us form good habits or bad habits. But much depends on the individual perception and belief to retain a good habit or to change a bad habit. So it means you might have got some of the habits formed from people around you or the surroundings uh, that you came from, but it is entirely up to you the inner core that you have, that is the one that will help you to decide whether to give up something or to continue with something. Same thing happened in the story that I talked about the mother who loved her son so much. Now, the son hated to see the mother at the point of his death for the single reason that it was the mother who was responsible in the perception of the son that she let him start a tiny stealing habit which ended up in terms of murdering uh, brutally someone for which he was uh, uh, given this death punishment. Now here it is the mother who is responsible, her perception is that she loved her son so much that she did not want him to feel hurt even if she criticized or told him to do something, but actually it resulted in forming such a very bad habit starting with stealing which ended up uh, shooting somebody and then uh, resulting in his own uh, uh, death. Now here again I impeached on this point that forming bad habits are dangerous and extremely harmful. Therefore, it is better to nip a bad habit in the bud itself nip the bad habit in the bud itself. That was the last point by which I concluded the previous lecture. Now in this lecture, let us look at how this habit cycle is formed, okay. how, how, how are you getting trapped. And before we look at, I just want to tell you some interesting aspects of habit and then again I want you to keep that in mind in terms of developing your personality. First understand that everything is habit. In fact, the famous uh, Nobel Prize winner for literature, Samuel Beckett in his the play that won the Nobel Prize for him, Waiting for Godot, uh, makes a very uh, interesting statement about habit. He says, everything is habit and then he says that habit is the ballast that chains the dog to its vomit and then he says, breathing is habit, life is habit. So, habit is the chain okay, that is tying this dog to its vomit, it is a very strong chain. So, that has tied the dog to its vomit, 
because when the dog is eating and then it is vomiting, it is not able to move and then it is forced to do that. So, habit especially bad habit is literally like that, but he says that even breathing is a kind of habit for us. Okay. Every, everything he says is habit. Now, if you understand that and take that perspective, you understand that hard work that you form is a habit. There is a novel by uh, Somerset Mom named The Racer's Edge, in which there is an interesting character, the protagonist, uh, fondly called Larry. Now, while he talks about this character, the narrator who is actually Somerset mom, he says that one thing struck him very much in terms of Larry's character and what was that? He saw Larry sitting in the library at a point of time in a place and then he went out, he went that is the narrator went out did some shopping, had his food and then came back after 5 hours, Larry was sitting in the same place reading the novel and he was about to finish that, the same posture without any slight disturbance was completely immersed in reading that novel. So, the quality impressed the author like anything, somebody who could read at a stretch 5 hours without any disturbance, whatever is happening in the surrounding. So, that is a good habit. Hard work is a habit, any, any habit like a reading, one sitting reading. So, these are all good habits, so is laziness. In terms of bad habit, it is formed. Indolence, indolence is just a general dislike for doing any work. Even a general dislike such as getting up from the bed in the morning. So, that is part of indolence, any, any work you just want to avoid. Perseverance is a habit, so is giving up. To continue in something, to fight till you win, to reach till the end and often you know that it is just at that last moment you feel so discouraged and the goal that you have set looks very uh, undaunting and then you feel like giving it up, but then you persevere if you have developed that as a habit and then you do not just give it up. But then giving up itself is a habit. Take for example, public speaking, two guys both are afraid of giving a talk, but one decides he will address that fear and then he will talk. So, he perseveres and then he becomes a very famous speaker. The other guy even a very small class activity given for uh, giving two minute talk, he prepared, he was thorough, but he was afraid of going to the stage. Due to his stage fright, he just gave it up. He never gave any talk in the public. He was afraid of talking to people in crowd, even slowly he became much more introverted and then he st started giving up, even he became a big manager in a company, he could not continue. So, giving up is also a habit, you give it up once, you keep continuing and then you all the time think about giving up instead of persevering. Success is a habit, you need to develop. And then in the uh, coming lectures, I am just going to talk about how to break this bad habit and then how to inculcate this habit of success. When I say success is a habit, you should understand that even failure is a habit. It's just a habit that you keep forming and you need to break that and come out and then join this side and make success a habit. Excellence is a habit, it is developed and then it is made as a habit, so is mediocrity, so is average performance, so is thinking that this much performance is enough. If I am just above average or average, that is fine, I need not become good, I need not become 
excellent, I need not become outstanding. That is how we started our first week lecture if you remember defining excellence and then you should try to aspire for excellence. Choosing to form good habits itself is a habit. So, is choosing to form bad habits. That is also uh, your mindset. It always tries to choose bad habits because you are tuned to that. You are tuned to gratifying yourself by something that is seeing before your eyes. You have diabetes, but you see a sweet kept before your eyes. You just want to grab and eat it, but you do not think about what will happen to your uh, blood sugar level. Is it going to shoot up? So, will you lose energy or will you faint or something happens to your blood pressure combined with this? You may be admitted in hospital because already you had similar problems. No, at that point of time you looked at the sweet and you wanted to eat it. So, that is again the choosing to form bad habits. You formed one, it continues. So, it is important to make the choice very carefully. So, think about it. Now, let us take a look at how this habit cycle is formed. First, either it is the stimulus, something is coming from the environment, it starts from this point, either it is coming from the environment or the stimulus is also trying to generate some kind of thoughts inside your mind. Okay. So, in the mind, either by some kind of uh, external agent, a thought is generated that mind is thinking, if I satisfy by doing that, I will be happy. I want to do that. Now, mind you, this is both for a good habit as well as a bad habit. This is just the habit cycle, how it starts. And then the mind thinks, okay, I want this, so I will vocalize this, I will put that in word form and then slowly I will perform it, I will implement it in action form. In certain cases, it could be even reaction. Somebody is sending a stimulus to you in the form of an action. So, you even respond to that in the form of reaction. Okay. Suddenly, night, it is raining and then my mind is thinking that, oh, if only I go to that uh, hotel and then uh, eat that uh, chicken at this time, how nice it will be. Okay. So, thought. Okay. Now, how the thought came? So, I was watching a TV and then somebody was eating uh, a dish, particularly the chicken dish that is favorite to me. I see that and then it is triggering in my mind, if I go to that hotel, I will get the same dish. Okay. And then I tell my wife or I tell my friend, shall we go? So, I put that in word and then action, okay. either we decide to go or not to go, that is action. Now, the next level is having performed this action, there is a reward or a punishment. Okay. The reward could be for example, you ate this food and then you felt very happy, so you relished it, you got it and then your need was satisfied. The punishment could be, so the food did not digest properly because you ate it at uh, late night and then it resulted in uh, stomach upset the next day. Now, the mind can correlate this, it can think, oh I enjoyed the food okay, and then I will continue to do that. No, at this time when I had it, I suffered eating that, so I will stop going to the hotel. So, both ways the mind can uh, think and then it forms a habit. The last time when it was raining, I went, I had this chicken from this restaurant and it was to so tasty. Every time it rains at this time, 
I will go and I will eat it. Every time I see that on TV, every time I see that on some book, so I like that particular brand and then I will go and then take from that restaurant. One way of mind thinking. The other way of mind thinking that, oh, every time I see that I am reminded about the stomach upset that I had due to which I lost lot of appointments, okay. some important activity I missed. So, I will stop, I will control. So, this kind of uh, uh, desire for eating it impulsively outside. So, I will be very careful. Okay. So, I will stop this. So, both ways the mind can function. So, in terms of good habit, bad habit formation it depends on how the mind functions and decides to form the habit. And once the habit is formed, the next level is reinforcement. The habit is repeated again and again and again and when it becomes a kind of trait in your character or personality. People start saying that this guy every day at 12 o'clock you can see him eating chicken in this place. So, now it becomes part of the character personality trait. And then the next level is the action reaction once again. Now, you start sort of uh, continuing with this kind of action reaction and then in terms of habit forming, it can lead to success or failure. Now, I gave a simple example like chicken, but then think about other example like the thought that I want to become a 10 pointer, I want to become the first student, number one student. Now, the stimulus has come from the advertisement or uh, the convocation that I saw in which that student was getting the gold medal. I also want to get it. Action or reaction to that is I will work hard, I will find out how this guy worked hard and then I will also work in that manner. Reward or punishment, reward. I am working hard and I am getting uh, appropriate grades, <coughs> good marks. Punishment, I am not working that enough, so I am getting less marks. Habit, reward, so I am getting this good marks, so I will inculcate this habit, okay, good habit. Now, this becomes my character personality. Every teacher is saying that, oh, this guy is the best student, very sincere, very much uh, studious and he deserves to get the first prize, okay, the gold medal. Now, action reaction, again I continue. So, not only in this college, I continue with other college. Now, it results in success if I continue with the same kind of thing, but if I got punished because I worked less, so I think that I cannot work that much and I continue with the punishment cycle and then I reach failure. Again, it triggers the same kind of failure thoughts and then it becomes a cycle. If I get the gold medal, if success is in there in my mind, again I will continue with the thought, again I will respond to the stimulus. So, this is the habit cycle by which you try to form either a good habit or a bad habit. Now, I will come back more about this when I want to tell you like how you can break bad habits and how you can form good habits. But I would like to tell you another story, it is an anecdote and then in this anecdote I just want to tell you the decision to change, that is the decision to form a good habit or develop a bad habit is something very crucial in everybody's life. Sometimes it as I said, it completely changes your personality and complete transformation happens by that moment in which you decide, I am going to stop this and then I am going to start a new leaf in my life chapter in which I will be known like this. A very good illustrative example we can have from R. K. Narayan's The Guide. So, one of my uh, favorite novels and some of you might have either watched the movie uh, which uh, in which uh, Devanand acted and it became a uh, big hit for him or 
you might have read the novel or there are uh, many like me who have read the novel as well as watched the movie. Now, what is it I want to discuss about this one? The character Raju in the novel, the guide is actually a guide and like usual guides, he is prone to tell lies, he does not bother about it, he indulges in minor cheatings and he enjoys doing that. So, even in terms of uh, uh, minor uh, uh, thefts and all that is just part of the life of guide and then he does not bother about that. And then as most of you know, he uh, falls in love with one of the tourists that is Rosie, he gets married to her, she is a, a classical dancer, he encourages her to dance and then they make lot of money, he becomes rich. Now, at that point, he has to ask her to sign a check so that he can get some money, but then instead of uh, doing that, uh, he uh, thinks that he himself will sign the check on her name that is he indulges in a forgery. The police catches him and then uh, he is sent to the prison. Now, at the beginning of the novel actually is coming back from the prison and then uh, he just gets a saffron cloth, he covers himself and then he sits under a banyan tree and then he is just at the outskirts of the village. The village master comes, sees him and then uh, he thinks that he is a saint, he is a great person because he spoke very less and then his uh, daughter was not willing to marry somebody. He asked Raju to talk to the daughter and immediately after that she accepted. So, the uh, village master thinks that this guy has some power. Now, the priests who were already there in the nearby temple, so they become jealous of the popularity he gets as a sadhu, as a saint and then they want to teach him a lesson and then they want to finish him rather and then they plan on an instance where there is no rain in that village and then they make the people believe that if somebody like this great pure person prays to God by fasting for 40 days, it would rain at the end of the 40th day when he will wash his feet and then finish the prayer. Now, situation, society compels him to take it and then he actually refuses to do, he tries to escape, but then the priests come and then they uh, do not let him go. So, he comes back and then he sits near the temple. First day of fasting starts and then he uh, tries to uh, take the prasad, so the uh, sweet dish that is kept and then the banana and the broken coconut that is kept, he wants to eat it. But by the time he sees a cockroach just uh, crawling in that place and then he uh, uh, feels repulsive and he does not want to take it. So, the next day again a rat again he sees moving that side and then he was about to eat, break the fasting first two days because he uh, feels very uh, hungry and then he does not believe in these things. But then somehow coincidentally the food he wanted to eat is actually uh, spoiled by the insects or uh, this rat that was moving here and there and then third day people start visiting him, hundred becomes uh, thousands and then a huge multitude is there. People start slowly coming from other places hearing about this person and on the third day it dawns on him that if so many people believe that he is capable of creating a miracle, why not he change? Okay. He decides to change at that moment thinking that because of this people's faith in me that I can bring some kind of positive change, a miracle to these people, I can bring rain just by fasting. So, why not I try that? Okay. 
and then he tries it, he continues. So, we see him becoming weak and weak. At the end of the novel, it ends so beautifully in a very ambiguous manner, where uh, he just goes to the river and then he says he sees the distant cloud. But in the movie, just because it is Devanand, the actual rain is shown. But the point I am making is, the single transformative moment in the character Raju, which uh, leads to a very debatable question uh, in literature courses, whether you treat Raju as a sinner or saint. Now, the obvious winner to this question is that the one who argues that he is a saint. Now, what is the point of argument? Like, if you look at a sinner and then Raju, the transformative moment that happens in him to decide that whatever bad habits that he accumulated could be transformed completely by one single event in which he thinks that people have so much faith and if he can transform to the person that they want, the saint that actually they have. So, he decides and then he goes deep within and then he wants to live up to that image. So, that decision to change becomes so crucial that makes us believe that even a sinner can become a saint because of the fact that when he was a sinner, he realized that the beast that is the animal, the evil part that makes you do all bad things, the beast was in him. But the novel ends with a kind of revelation that perhaps the God is also in him. The good thing, the angelic part that was also in him and that was revealed very interestingly by another set of circumstance. He was in a previously different set of circumstance where he indulged in all bad habits that led him to the prison. Again, he came to another circumstance where the divine part in him, the spiritual part in him, the part in which he could actually try to actualize himself, that self-actualization, trying to reach that peak experience that was possible for him. So, keep that in mind. Perhaps people think that the beast, in, beast is in us, but you should also know that the God is also in us. Bad habits, yes of course, you think that the circumstance is giving you and then making you form. But if you ask me whether it is the circumstance that is making a person, I would say no. Circumstance actually reveals the person as in the case of Raju at the end of the movie, where he could reveal the divine, the spiritual, the God in him that comes out in that circumstance. So, good habits which are again embedded in you can come out, if only you try to push yourself and then interact with the circumstance and try to bring the best in you. Now, as a concluding thought, one uh, interesting quote from Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kala, he says that you cannot change your future, but you can change your habits. You cannot change your future, but you can change your habits and surely your habits will change your future and surely your habits will change your future. And as Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. With this very positive concluding thought, I want you to develop those habits that will take you to excellence. In the next few lectures, let us see how we can break some of the obstacles which are there in us in terms of bad habits and how we can actually try to develop excellence by developing good habits. Thank you for being with me and then uh, let us uh, enjoy the journey of developing the good habits and then trying to reach excellence. Thank you once again.